Hey everybody, welcome to the Healing Place Church Daily Devotional Podcast. We want to welcome all of our viewers and all of our listeners on our audio podcast. We are nearing the end of the book of James. We're right here in the last chapter, and James is going to finish this letter strong. He's going to give us some real practical advice that I think will help us in our walk with Christ and help us to grow. Let's dive in. It says this in verses 16, 17, and 18. He says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. If you've got your Bible out right now, I want you to underline that phrase, that you may be healed. He says, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Verse 17, Elijah was as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. This is an amazing passage, and he starts off by talking about confession. Now, I think what's so cool and what's so interesting is this, is that James is a pastor, and he understands how to help Christians in their growth. And we know from other passages in the Bible that we are supposed to confess our sins to God. And the reason we confess our sins to God is because it brings about forgiveness. But here James is saying we have to do one thing more than that. We don't want to just confess for forgiveness. We also need to confess to each other to bring healing. You see, this is so cool of God. One of the things he does is he builds our own healing in the context of community. See, Forgiveness is between me and God, but my healing is not going to take place apart from other people. God has placed us in the body of Christ, and we need other people to sit down with and to share our struggles with. And he said, as you do this, as you begin to confess this, what's going to happen in your life is you're going to see a transformation. You're going to see a powerful healing. But it's not just simple confession. It's not like, hey, here's a list of the things I'm struggling with or things of the list I've done. He says to pray with each other. You see, these confession meetings, they're supposed to end in prayer, where you're praying with each other. You're interceding interceding for your, your brothers and your sisters in Christ. And look, he goes on to say this, that this prayer is important because the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Now, it's important to understand how James is using the word righteous. There's a couple of different meanings in the New Testament for righteous. And whenever you look at Paul's writing, he's going to use it one way and James is going to use it differently. Paul is going to talk more about what we could say is positional righteousness, which is just basically standing before God in a legal sense that, hey, we are considered not guilty in God's sight. In Romans 3.24, Paul echoes this. He says, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. And he did this through Jesus Christ. So we have as Christians, positional righteousness. But what James is talking about here is what we could call practical righteousness or what Paul would call sanctification. And so what this is, is living a life of obedience. You see, if we are living in sin and we're not confessing that sin, and we're not experiencing healing in that area, what's going to happen is is our practical righteousness is actually going to greatly affect our prayer life. And he uses Elijah as an example here. And if you've ever studied Elijah, you know that Elijah was a man of great faith and a man of great obedience. Elijah was in sync with the will of God. He was in sync with the direction of God. As one of the prophets of Israel, he had a special mandate and a special call to be the mouthpiece of God, to speak on behalf of God. And Elijah did this with great faithfulness. And he gives this awesome example that even one time that Elijah made this Uh, outstanding prayer, and God literally closed up the rain and closed up the skies for a long period of time. You see, this is crazy to the natural man. We think, wait, how could someone pray this and it actually happened? But it's very simple. He was a man who knew God's will, who walked in obedience. But I love what James says here in verse 17. He says, Elijah was as human as we are. You see, What's so cool is this, is there are no great men, just ordinary men and women 
with great obedience. You see, Elijah was just like you and he was just like me. There was nothing supernatural about him. You know, sometimes we, we can look at Bible characters or even look at spiritual leaders and we can think and put them on this pedestal and think, wow, the, these are the kind of people that God actually answers their prayers. And James is saying, no, it's not like that. God doesn't answer their prayers and not your prayers because of who they are. The way that it works is that when we are walking in God's will in obedience, what happens is our hearts and our minds and our lives become aligned to his will. And so then our prayers become aligned to his will. His will. And as we pray these prayers, supernatural things happen. It doesn't matter if you're someone who preaches to millions of people or you're someone that leads a small group or if you're just somebody who, 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 who runs a business or somebody who raises a family. There are no special people. There's only a special God. And we all have the access to the same power of prayer. But it all starts with what he said at the beginning, healing, confession. But I love how he adds this. He adds that not only did Elijah pray, he prayed passionately. And if you do a study on that Greek word, what you'll see is this, is that Elijah, he sought God with all of his heart. And he didn't pray with this uh, kind of emotionless, faithless prayer, but he passionately sought after God and God's will. And God showed up in supernatural ways in his life. This is encouraging to us. Do you want more power in your prayer? Do you want God to answer your prayers? Well, you don't have to be a special person to do that. You just have to be the kind of person who is both positionally righteous in Christ, but walking it out and in a, in a practical way. You see, as you seek God, as you confess your sins to each other, as you walk in healing, what God does in our lives is that we see a movement of prayer supernaturally. So today, whatever you're walking through, maybe you're walking through some sins. Maybe you need to sit down with somebody. Maybe you need to shoot, shoot a text today or, or, or make a phone call and say, hey, I need to sit down and talk to you about my struggles. Or maybe you just need to pray a little bit more. Maybe you need to focus on some fervent, passionate prayer today. I believe God wants to answer your prayers and show up in your life in a supernatural way today. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this amazing text. Thank you, Lord, that you forgive us. When we confess our sins, there is forgiveness for us. But Lord, as we confess our sins to each other, there's healing that takes place. And I pray for every viewer today, I pray for every listener today, that whatever they're going through, maybe, maybe they're struggling with a secret sin, Lord, that you would give them the courage to bring it out to a beloved Christian brother or sister so that they may walk in full healing, so that they can see their prayer life take off in a supernatural way. And we know you want to answer our prayers, but we have to align our heart and our life with you first. Thank you so much for all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.